is there anything that was out of the ordinary or out of the normal routine that went on here this morning? Do you intend to send anyone to jail? Is it normal for a county employee to have to set a bond? Phrasing. Okay. What exactly went on here this morning? Uh, three of the four county commissioners uh, were arraigned here on the uh, charges previously filed against them, I believe last Monday. Uh, the three present were John Whittington, Jim Tyson, and Mel Price. Uh, I asked them how they wanted to plead to the charges filed against them, and they each wanted to plead not guilty. I entered the uh, three not guilty pleas and uh, asked them to sign uh, three $200 bonds to assure their appearance in court, which they did. Is there anything out of the ordinary, out of routine business that occurred? Uh, nothing except that they were county commissioners who appeared. Uh, these are uh, these are being handled very routinely in regard to these three defendants. Is there any question of sending anybody to jail at this point? Is this in question at all? In view of the fact that these men appeared and, and uh, pled not guilty and signed the uh, three two hundred dollar bonds. Uh, I, as a justice of the peace, do not have authority to send any of these three individuals today to jail. Is there any time limit when the rest of the commissioners are supposed to appear, or has this been established? Did your letter, it was back, say, 10 days? Uh, I made a special point of not setting a particular time limit, meaning only to uh, leave a reasonable time. 10 days or two weeks could certainly be construed as being reasonable. Uh, I, still look for the other two, Judge Sterrett and uh, uh, Commissioner Denver Seal, to uh, make their appearances like these three did today and simply tell me whether or not they want to plead guilty or not guilty. What's going to be involved in setting a trial date? Have you yet set it and what will it take to set a trial date? What's the normal routine? Uh, well, there's no trial necessary in view of a guilty plea. I'd be a little presumptuous in even considering uh, setting trials prior to uh, arraignment and uh, receiving the pleas. You not get any special privileges. Uh, actually, in fact, they, they insisted on the bond, didn't they? Well, I presume they did. This is routine, though, and I, I have no reaction to this at all. Do you have any intention of giving anybody any special privileges? I really don't know what you mean by special privileges. Do you mean treat the commissioners differently from someone that I don't know, perhaps? Is that what you mean? Well, any any special favors, as in the terms of the public would think of a, a special favor to an official, a personal special favor, I expect. Well, my only interest is in uh, seeing this matter uh, tried as routinely as possible. Now, I have no doubt but that these people will appear in trial and uh, I have, there would be no purpose to be served by setting any bonds and requiring sureties on the bonds. Uh, I didn't require sureties on their bonds because they are public officials and because I'm personally acquainted with them and I know that I can uh, depend on them being here in trial. Are you very interested in having this to be a serious, uh, normal trial when it, you know, it comes to be that? Uh, this will be a serious and normal trial.
there is no such thing as a ideal jail in the state of Texas. The corrections programs uh, on the state level are exceptionally good. Naturally, they do need improvement, and they will improve, and they are improving as time goes on. There is a total failure of co the correctional process within the local units of government throughout the state. How soon do you think the regional jail should be built? I would say as soon as the managers, and I don't mean city managers or county managers, I'm speaking of the elected officials, can get together within this metropolitan area and uh, decide on a centralized uh, joint operation. Is it a critical situation? I say that it is. I think it's very critical. Should be done immediately. I think it should be done as soon as possible. Texas, of course, uses a six-man jury in county courts. It means that this procedure is still beyond challenge on a constitutional basis, that this state and a dozen other states that have the same procedures can continue them. I hope it means that uh, other state court deviations from federal practice uh, will continue to be valid, that uh, the ultimate test will be not a precise form of the procedure, but its fairness. Because after all, the due process clause simply says due process of law, and this should mean essential fairness and not particular forms. Professor Harding, if you were acting as defense attorney, what objections would you have to this Supreme Court ruling? I probably would have a complaint that it's easier for a defense counsel to hang a 12-man jury than it is a six-man jury, that finding one holdout, one dissenter among 12 may be easier than finding one holdout among six. On the other hand, if I was interested simply in the justice of the result, not in in hanging juries, I don't think this would make much difference to me. Mr. Gaston, what specific recommendations did you make to the Fort Worth City Council today? I recommended that they give serious consideration to going into a contract or a methods by which they could build a regional jail somewhere between Dallas and Fort Worth that is adjacent to institutions of higher learning that has transportation uh, capabilities such as highways, freeways, etc., adjacent to the two metropolitan areas. As an expert in this matter, how would you evaluate the present system of jails? Do you mean this locally within this particular metropolitan yes. area, including Dallas, I assume? Yes, Dallas and Fort Worth. Uh, there is no such thing. I'll say this. I'll bring it. It's not a matter of choice. Mr. Gillespie, would you outline briefly the reasons for choosing the downtown library site? Mr. Harding, what is the significance of this decision today? Well, its principal significance, I would say, is that the tendency of the United States Supreme Court to fasten rules of federal procedure on state criminal trials may be slackening. There have
has been a tendency in recent years to require states to conform to federal procedures. This case marks uh, a substantial and important difference between state and federal procedure. What does this mean to the to the states? Getting into it. Okay. Mr. Harding, just what does this decision mean to states such as Texas? Ms. Fair? I do. I think states should be free to have their own criminal procedure as long as essential tests or fairness are, are met. I don't consider the number 12 to be a magic number. The 12 man jury was established at common law more or less by accident in the first place. Professor, Har Professor Harding, if you were busted trying it. Professor Harding, just what does this mean to the states? All of us know that the city of Dallas is the co-sponsor. That, that, that you ought to be before that group and they meet Wednesday night. Yes, it should be possible, sir. Uh, the main thing, of course, is getting to is using the tax money for defending these people. Like the council. But I don't think that they should be declared paupers and defended with the tax money. I think that in the business that they're in, that they should be able to pay for their own legal counsel. Well, of the ability of these people to pay. Now, Mr. Price last week said that this man, um, uh, Burns, or whatever his name is, with this uh, Dallas Note paper, huh? Stein, said that he's able to pay. Well, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't debate that because I don't know the man. I don't know anything about his background. Obviously, Jesse does. But the other man, I don't know either. And, and, and the, the, you have your time. And the, it has seemed to me that, that uh, to have a person declared a pauper is not our business at all. I mean, I wouldn't even know how to go about finding out if a man's a pauper or not. But this is, but there is a, a being investigated, and that they take appropriate action. <laughs> but, well, the thing that's at stake here is uh, that the people are looking to us as elected leaders. Uh, uh, we have a perspective and work. We are very much concerned about this situation, and uh, we are assuring you that uh, uh, this will be channeled through regular legal procedures. A man who painted a new man on the front of his paper. We should attack uh, Ed Polk here, uh, but attack obscenity in all in all its stages. If you're going to attack this young man and Ed Polk because a new man that really paraded downtown. I mean, this thing actually happened. See, the man's proven facts. Now, you have on the Dallas bus, and it's the Lego bus particularly, it goes through the Negro neighborhood, and this over life-size, above life-size woman 
it spread out on the side of the bus for everybody to see. Now what's so different in the male body, in the female body, that, that you can continually advertise all over America with the nude woman's body, and then you attack a person because they represented Ed Pope, because he represented this man uh, in just one stage, and he's needed by so many poor people here. Now, I would just like to you keep saying the people, the people. Why not keep it to Jesse Price? And what's what, what nice about nobody in the news than you are? We've had one very serious crime committed with a, a youngster murdered out in the uh, Cobb Park area in Polly by a mentally retarded child. And then over the past weekend, we had two mentally retarded youngsters with criminal tendencies uh, commit a burglary in the Eagle Mountain area. It's something that's very serious that uh, has arisen here in our county. At the moment, where do you put these children? What, last, uh, at the present time, they're in the Tarrant County Jail. Uh, previously, of course, they were in the youth center, and then we have them uh, roaming the neighborhood. What do you specifically propose to do about the problem? Well, I'm writing uh, Lieutenant Governor Barnes and Speaker Mutcher, uh, both of whom I served with in the, uh, ho uh, in the House of Representatives. Uh, both of them are men that I know that are very concerned about such problems, uh, that a survey should be made between now and the time that the uh, legislature goes into session with an idea of providing state facilities for the youngsters who are retarded but with uh, criminal tendencies. We don't have such in the state at this time. Do you visualize then eventually and ultimately, perhaps within a very short time, some sort of system of homes throughout the state to treat this sort of child or to care for this sort of child? I'm sure that we'll have the necessary facilities. Well, of course, the reason is the widespread drug problem that we have in this area and all over the United States, of course. And we applied for this uh, $200,000 plus grant from the federal government for narcotic education to educate first the child or the young person against the use of uh, drugs and secondly to educate the parents to recognize the problem in the child and then what to do about the problem once they recognize it. How will the school system enter into this program? Well, we, we have a, a uh, very comprehensive plan, and the school board has also, and uh, we will cooperate 100% with the, with the school board. They uh, uh, are very interested in this problem, as are we, and we intend to work together on this in the public schools with the children. We want to actually help uh, provide better tools for law enforcement. Uh, we want to help in eliminating uh, the use of drugs. Uh, we think that's very detrimental to uh, our population. And we're going to do everything that we can to actually uh, eliminate uh, the drug use. And uh, of course, legislatively, uh, as we announced today at our district meeting here in Dallas, we're appointing a Blue Ribbon Committee, which uh, we 
wanted to be a liaison group between uh, the East Texas Chamber of Commerce and uh, the governor's staff, the governor and his staff, and of course we want to meet with uh, he and his staff and uh, possibly key members of the House and Senate on uh, legislative matters that will be coming uh, before the uh, legislature, which will convene in January. Arthur, you have a very...
the major factors that we considered, Mr. Sinclair, are the cost of land, construction, and operation. The second major factor is the nature of the usage that we currently experience and expect to experience at a central library site, accessibility both by car and by public transportation, and the availability of parking facilities. The only place that we have that we can send them at this time is to the Tarrant County Jail. What about the Denton State School, perhaps Mahia or somewhere else? Uh, these are overcrowded and uh, they do not choose. At the Denton State School they have a waiting period there of some two years and uh, these youngsters with ten uh, criminal tendencies pose a danger not only to themselves but to the other uh, youngsters who, who are in the school and so this is uh, no place for them. Officials gathered as to what to do about the radical element, whether uh, expulsion or uh, or some other idea about that. No, uh, in fact, we didn't. Uh, there was really no discussion on what probably should be done with the radical element. I think there was a recognition that it does exist, and uh, that the effort to radicalize college and university campuses will continue. But I think. Perhaps our greatest stress was placed again on that large group of students who fall within both extremes and who uh, are not likely on most campuses to fall the extreme, follow the extreme, and particularly in the radical element, but who do want some answers and who do want to become involved in the solution of many of our the problems of our society. Dr. Halliday, if the students who are working within the system campaigning for election fail. What will be doing to me? I wonder if you have from an institution. Dr. Halliday, you had an opportunity ex to express your opinion. That was the reason for the invitation. And what is your opinion about the campus unrest in general? Well, my opinion is, of course, that there we recognize the very radical element whose uh, efforts at one extreme is to disrupt the institution and its basic purpose. That there is developing perhaps on some campuses and in some regions in this country another extreme to the right, in this case, uh, developing in response to and, and in opposition to the radical left and that this very likely can and will cause some serious problems. We're talking about the kind of hard hat approach now. That, that great majority of students, in my opinion, are legitimately concerned, but are, are legitimately concerned in such a way that they can approach these problems with reason, but that they are seeking answers and they want forthright, logical answers. And they want to understand what's taking place in our society and why some of our major problems can't be solved immediately. And I think this is probably our biggest problem for all of us to understand that there is no instant solution to a major social problem. Would you say you were optimistic that the, uh, the radicals and the reactionaries would be swallowed up then in the majority? Well, I'm not overly optimistic, but I think we're seeing, I have to speak now for my own campus, uh, a very reasonable approach to these kinds of things and a willingness to uh, talk out and to seek proper answers and to operate within the bounds of reason and within the purpose and objectives of uh, a university. Compared to other colleges, there hasn't been really much student unrest in Texas colleges and universities. Why, in your opinion? Well, I would have to generalize here, but I think there's a, uh, this has to do with our region and the political and social uh, values and philosophies that exist in this region. Uh, we're quite aware of this. We can see on the west and the east coast the kinds of problems that are occurring there that are not yet occurring here. Uh, we can see some of them moving in our direction as they do occur. But in general, our students are, are not as prone to 
the radical, destructive kinds of activities that students in other regions of these United States seem to be. As a college administrator, how do you...